of the circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Hello. Hello, Major. Major Mike. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's it's you, Jerry. You you gave me a start, that's what you did. Oh, I'm sorry. Are uh, you busy? Of course I'm busy. Can't you see that I'm writing? Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll come again later. Here, here, now. You, you stay right here. I'm glad to see you, Jerry. What's on your mind? Well, things are sure happening to me pretty fast. I might have to go into business. What? You go into business? Why, sure, why not? Well, what kind of business? Well, you see, it's like this. You know that property out in Montana that Dad left me? Yes, I remember hearing about that. Well, we got a registered letter from the Montana Railroad Lines asking about who owned that property and talking about a deal. They seem to be in an awful hurry about finding out about it. Oh, that's splendid, Jerry. I certainly wish some of my relatives had left me something. You're a lucky boy, Jerry. I'll see. Uh, but, uh... Didn't you ever have any relatives who might have left you something and, you know, that you didn't even know about? No, none of my people ever had any money except Grandpa Gustav. And, well, I guess we'll never know where all his money went. Your grandfather? Yes, sir. And let me tell you, Jerry, there never was a tighter man that lived than Grandpa Gustav. They called him Gustav the Miser. Oh, was he rich? Everybody thought he was. But he never spent a cent he didn't have to. He wore the meanest clothes, and when we were children, we never wanted to go and see him because he was so stingy. He never gave us pennies or candy like most grandparents do. Well, what did he do with all of his money? That's just it. No one knows. No one ever found out. Maybe he wasn't rich after all. Well, yes, he was. He owned lots of property in Parker City just before the town began to grow. And then he sold it all before he died for cash. See, that's something. Yeah, and then he changed it all into gold. Jiminy Willikers, this is a real mystery. Yeah. Hey, Mike, get the flag up. Yes, the flag's up, Jake. Jiminy, it's time to eat. And now, look, here you got me to talking, and I haven't written this letter to comment. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Major. Well, never mind, Jerry. I'll come back here to my tent after the show tonight and do it. We're not moving tonight, so there'll be no rush. I can come back here when it's all quiet on this circus lot and really concentrate on this letter. Uh, without having a fella come in and gab and well, talk. Well, that's all right, Jerry. I, I'm glad you came. Now, you run along. It'll take me a second or so to get ready, but come and visit me again soon, Jerry. Sure thing. Uh, be seeing you, Major. Hiya, Jerry. Oh, hello, Mike. Oh, uh, don't tell me you're hungry. No, but, well, there's nothing else to do, so I might as well go along and pass the time. <laughs> you don't say. How do you like that, Pete? The boy's a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, have, uh, have you seen Speed? He was supposed to be waiting around here. Oh, who's he? He's the new fella. Who does the race with the horse? Oh, the guy that can walk faster than we can run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, wonder where he's got hey, to. Hey, Jerry. Jerry, not so fast. Oh, there he is now. Hey, where are you, Speed? Right behind you. What's your hurry? Why, the flag's up. That's always Jerry's hurry. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jerry, what'd you pick up? Call me. I sure played in luck. The major told me all about his granddad, and oh, boy, what a story. Well, good for you, Woody. Well, give me time first. 
But the first thing to do, well, we might play the joke on him tonight. You think well, we I don't could? see why not. Why? Any special reason? Well, yeah. Uh, he'll be in his tent after the show tonight. He's got an important letter to write, and he's planning to do it after everything's quieted down in the lodge. What a setup for a ghost. Now, listen here, Jerry. We'll do it, and we'll put on an act that he'll never forget. <laughs> Carmen, let me hear news of you and your brothers. My regards to them, and, of course, you know how I feel about you. Oh, it's getting chilly. Now I better sign this, and... That's funny. Sounds like an owl. Who's there? Who's there? Goodness me. What is that? Oh! Of my... What? Are you the grandson of Gustav the Miser? W -w -w what? You can't see me, my grandson, but I can see you. R really? B -b -b what? what? You must not be afraid. Now sit down quietly at your table. Yes. I want to talk to you. No, be quiet and listen very carefully. I am Gustav, your old grandfather. Yes, grandfather. I have been watching you now for a long, long time. Watching me? To find out if you were worthy. Worthy? I was a very wealthy old man when I died, my grandson. <laughs> but no one could prove it. No, sir, your old grandfather was foxy. No one knew where he kept his gold. Y yes gryandfather But now the time has come. Your time has come. My time? You mean... I'm going to die. <laughs> Not so fast, my son. Not so fast. No, indeed. You will not die. Yes. Oh, but, but, but what is it you want to tell me? In good time. In good time. You remember our hometown well? Yes, of course I do. You remember where the old car tracks ended on Market Street? Yes, Grandfather. At the end of those tracks, there was an empty field belonging to Olaf Svensson. Oh, yes, Grandfather. <laughs> Little did Olaf think I had buried my pot of gold under the old elm tree in the northwest corner. The elm tree? Tree? Yes. You remember the one? Yes. Yes, of course. Dig down six feet on the south side of the tree, and there you will find... Yes, yes. You will find... Louder, Grandfather. I can't stay, but I had to tell you because soon it will be too late. Why? What's going to happen? It will be too late. Tomorrow you must go. Tomorrow the gold will be there. Tomorrow. Grandfather! Grandfather! Tell me more! Come back! Come back! Tell me more! Oh, Grandfather, don't leave me yet, Grandfather! So you see, Mr. Randall, I just had to bother you tonight. And you see why I've got to get away tomorrow. I've got to get to Parker City. Mm. Well, maybe you're right, but maybe you're wrong too, Major. You know, we can imagine things. Not me. No, sirree. I, I could hear just as plain. And don't you suppose I know my own grandfather's voice? <clears throat> uh, well, uh, well, yes, yes, but uh, 
Oh, now, listen, Major, I, I'm going to be very busy. I've just sent for Jerry. Jerry? Yes, I, I've just had a wire that involves him, and we have to get an answer off tonight. It uh, can't be delayed. Yes, but this trip cannot be delayed either, Mr. Oh, Randall. You, you can't leave the circus, Major. I have a contract with you till the end of the season. But I could fly, and only miss one day, only one. Now, listen, Major, how do you know you could find that tree? Well, I guess I spent my entire childhood there. I guess I know that place as well as... as uh, uh, Major, how long since you've been in Parker City? About 20 years. Have you stopped to think that the city has grown up and the car tracks may have even disappeared by now? Oh. Oh. Of course. I forgot, my goodness. But but the, but the voice, Mr. Randall. You, uh, you say there was quite a wind blowing and you could hardly hear. You, you might have been mistaken. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll go to Rosa. She can tell me. This time, I'm sure she can tell me. Mr. Randall, did you send for me? Uh, yes, Jerry. Uh, just a minute. Sit down. Yeah, that's the ticket. I'll see Rosa. She will be able to help me, I'm sure. Goodbye, Mr. Randall. All right, Major. Boy, he didn't even see me. No, I, he seems to have other things on his mind, uh, doesn't he, Jerry? What kind of things, Mr. Randall? Jerry, uh, do you know anything about a voice that the Major might have heard in his tent? Well, gee, well... Jerry, uh, think twice before you answer that one. Yeah, I guess I do, Mr. Randall, but... Gee, Speed and I... Oh, gee, I, I told on Speed. Now, that's all right. I, I'll have a talk with Speed later, but as far as you're concerned, Jerry, uh, I'm a little surprised. Yeah, I'm quite a bit surprised that you take advantage of any peculiarity of a fellow performer while the Major has his whims and fancies, son, just as I have. Uh, maybe you have a few yourself, hmm? I... Well, I suppose I have. I, I don't know of any, but... All right, then, uh... Suppose Major might hid rags overnight in one of the wagons or cages and, and made you think he'd seen rags running after some strange man off the lot. What would you do? Well, gee, gosh, I, I'd just about go crazy, I guess. You bet you would. Well, rags is one of your whims, isn't he? Sure, yeah, he is. And that's the way the Major thought about this so-called ghost that you and Speed cooked up. A practical joke, Jerry. A practical joke's all right, just as long as it doesn't do anyone any harm. But just the minute a joke hurts anyone, well, then it becomes unkind, cruel. I'm awful sorry, Mr. Randall. Honest, I am. I'll go right out and find the Major and tell him I'm sorry. a boy. And then we won't say anything more about it. Oh, but uh, before you go, we've got something quite important to do. What? Uh, say, you haven't heard yet from the M.O. Railroad. That's just what I have. The wire came an hour ago. We have to send a night letter off tonight, so, so it'll reach them in the morning. Oh, gee. <laughs> All right, here's the wire. I'll let you read it yourself. 